Welcome back to We Speak Cinema. Um, my name is Peter, and I'm here with my co-host, Iwan. Or, or today's ghost, uh, Marlon Brando. The ghost or co-host? I said ghost. Oh, the ghost of Marlon. Okay. Yeah. The ghost of Marlon is here with us. We are here to talk about uh, and review a film that we both saw recently. But we, but we don't own. But we don't own, so there's no Blu-ray getting pulled out of nowhere, actually. Um, it is by Satyajit Ray, and it is called The Hero. Now, this is not part of the Apu trilogy, mm. but and I'm not actually sure whether it's a later film of his or an earlier film in his I film. Think it, this is 1966. So, tell me much, but you know, uh, mid career, let's say. Sure, sure, let's say that. And also, um, ladies and gentlemen, we did Google how to say his name. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, now that that's settled, um, <laughs> just initial thoughts. What do you think of the film? Right. <clears throat> well, um, I thought it was great. I thought the whole concept was executed very well. Mm -hmm. However, I think it's too long. Okay. The movie... Did just, you watch it in one sitting? Yeah, I did. I did. It was one sitting. And I just... It felt too long in certain scenes. I, I didn't feel that they, they were needed necessarily. Mm -hmm. Or just certain scenes were just... Do you have an example much. as to a scene that you felt was an unnecessary? Maybe there were too many flashbacks to his early life. Okay. I, I maybe, agree with you. I agree. Maybe I think the, the flashback with his friend, remember that it was one of his friends who was... Um, like the, the, the an home advocate, activist? Yeah. Exactly. An advocate for the rights of the workers. Right. And then you see your first flashback of when they were young. And then you see mm -hmm. the second flashback when we have our um, a protagonist who's now very famous and he's asked to go by his friend to speak in front of workers and he denies yeah i think that would have had a more impactful sort of um message if it was said instead of being shown i completely agree with you i'm i'm actually shocked that i i we both thought of the same thing because there were just too many flashbacks yeah. just a little bit a little bit too much and every time they cut back to them actually sitting there it was more interesting than the flashbacks sometimes. Exactly. And I wanted more this movie to be a it is a dialogue film, but I wanted it to I wanted more long takes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see more interaction between like on camera interaction between the our protagonist and the uh, uh, reporter. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to see that. Especially maybe I wanted to see the uh, a lengthier scene when they are. They're, they arrive in a station and uh, our protagonist is being recognized yes. by people and people just swarm the train. I wanted that to be a longer scene. It, to me, it felt too short. And I think you could have explored something more interesting in that scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I guess also are the other um, storylines that we are presented to. So mm -hmm. we have our protagonist storyline Right. We have the 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 other guy with his newlywed wife, and we have the reporters. Story. Yeah. I think the newlywed wife. I don't think it's it's. Yeah. Important. Is that the guy who's also trying to get the business? Exactly. Deal? So he's trying to get the business by that, sort of. That, personally, I again I agree with you. That storyline didn't was not fulfilled. I feel like it was given no. to us. It was set yeah. up, and then. Not much really happened with that. No, at all. I think it was fulfilled in the sense that um, the girl at the end, she said that she wanted to become a. Yeah, she want, and she I, to act that is sort song. of the the arc of that thing. I yeah, but you know. Uh, however, though, what I did like is that at certain points in the film, throughout the film, uh, we have those uh, sort of one-liners that stick with you, mm. and there's one point where you see the line. I forgot who says it. And also, here's the thing about this film is that at certain points is very forgettable. And again, the forgettable stuff or the forgettable scenes, I think it's caused by the length and by the excessive sort of cuts mm -hmm. of the film. But anyway, there's a, there's a line where he says, oh, you know, we learned everything from America. 
the way we should act. Oh, yes. Yes. Right. So there. Um, yes. But I actually like this because I know what you're talking about. This is from oh, the like part it. where uh, it's a flashback to his right. theater teacher or something That's or right. the other. Yeah, yes. Who, who's claiming that theater is the higher art form because you get a reaction from the audience in real time versus what you do on film. And this is what's sort of causing the conflict between the main characters. So I, I do like exactly what you just said. I love that that scene. Yeah, and I, and I like the whole dialogue between um, the, the, the play director and uh, the theater director and our protagonist yeah. When you should be in plays that you're a puppet when you're in films, but you're more free on stage because you're getting all the energy um, from the audience. I mean, I, I never acted on stage. Um, mm -hmm. You have many, many times. Yeah. Um, uh, and you've been behind the camera as I have been behind the camera, I mean, rather in front of the lens. Right. And I feel that you have, you're actually more free in front of the lens than when you are on stage. Mm hmm because on stage it's a different kind of freedom I very think. very different kind of freedom but i feel that you're more free in front of the lens because you are able to repeat the same thing over and over again until you're sort of satisfied yeah absolutely so when i was watching that uh, the whole idea sort of solidified in me that you know film is this whole idea sort of solidified in me that the whole that uh, film is um mode of expression of mm -hmm. freedom of expression but i think is the highest form of, exp of yeah. this freedom you know yeah again i think the purpose of the film was great i love the way the hero the title and the word hero is throughout the film mm -hmm. because at, at, at a certain point who is the hero in the film well it's the protagonist but he's the hero within his own film that mm -hmm. he's promoting, he's going to Delhi to promote, and it's the hero of our film. Yeah. That um, uh, he's a very stoic person. He's a person who's very calm, even though he has a very high status in India or high status within the entertainment right. world. He's very calm. He doesn't take a private um, uh, room to himself. Yes. He shares it with people, so he's humble. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he knows who he is. Oh, absolutely. He is very aware of who he is. And I like when you said calm, I immediately thought of the scene where uh, he sits down for a meeting or for food with the reporter and they stop at a station and everybody's crowding the window and pounding on the window. And she yeah. is not used to this. So she's embarrassed and, and all this stuff. And he says, he doesn't exactly say, you know, this is normal for me, but he says sort of like, you know, just ignore it and... And she's like, how can you live like this? Because they live two completely different lives, which is right. something I want to touch upon, actually, because that was one of my favorite parts of the film, actually, uh, the reporter and him, because the reporter is a way that he, it's almost like therapy for him. He's getting a lot off his chest because he sees some somebody who doesn't exactly care about anything that he's done in his career. So he feels that that is a suitable person to spill everything that he's ever felt about his life. And like you said earlier uh, about, you know, me having been on stage and besides all the criticisms of this film, I was almost tempted to give this film a five. And that's just on a personal level because I feel like this movie was almost made for me. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to say like, I, I relate yeah, so you see, you see how it feels because we were talking in the previous video in regards to the Fablemans in regards about me. So now you you know how it feels when yeah, like it it it's not about the the fame or anything. It's just more so like I felt like I understood it on a different level. That's right. That's right. I, I'm very glad. I'm and so happy that that you found the film. Yeah, that you can relate to so much. Yeah, I, I just thought it would like a um, few things was in the beginning. I don't know if you caught this, but they didn't they don't show his face for like five minutes. That's right. right. Yeah, I know. So and I like already they, they showed him, him tying his shoes. Yeah, yeah. And dressing up. Yeah. And it's already building into this idea of, well, OK, who is this guy? You know, we want to see his face, but maybe he's so famous that we can't even look at him you know this god like right. figure almost it's it's the indiana jones effect you know because yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly. the raiders this is the well 
This is before the Indiana Jones. Yeah, so it's the Indiana Jones is actually the Sadia Jid Ray effect. Right, the hero effect. Um, the t- there was a point where uh, he sat down in the beginning at the table, and I just loved how the camera was moving across. I love when like you see like flat surfaces, and the camera sort of just follows a- around the flat surfaces. That's just something that I really like. Um, and I wrote that this film, the hero, is sort of like a commentary on film itself and the American film industry, like you said earlier, and its effects on Indian uh, films. And it's just this big, like, collage of different, uh, you know, ideas about film and what what they mean. And, and like you said, the different tools that they might have in India versus in America and what it means between theater and film as an art form. And one thing I want to touch upon was the dream sequence where he takes a nap for the first time and he's drowning in money. And initially, you know, because I had no idea, I thought that the person who was reaching out at him was like a god or something. And in a way it is. But because he has some sort of like, uh, I want to call them fish, like flakes Mm. on his face is what it looks like. Mm. Um, um, Some scales or something like that. So it made him look more Mm godlike. And to... And to the protagonist, the hero, that's sort of his first teacher that taught him, even though he might not have agreed with him initially. That's sort of the first person he looked up to that he could say that, oh, maybe this could be my career. This is what I do want to do, you know. Um, so he was, the, the, he was the father figure, as we know, our protagonist was an orphan. Right. Both yes. of his parents died when he was very mm-hmm. young. And we don't know truly the whole backstory, but we can assume that this guy who was the theater director was the father figure, the figure that that he idolized, that he wanted to be as, you know, the yeah. figure that taught him everything that he has to be learned about acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I don't know if it was intentional, but I did catch the, um, I think, the symbolism of the painting of adam touching god's hand you know what i'm talking about where within the dream where their hands are so close to each other almost touching i don't know if it was intentional but that's something that i just have seen in my life so i think about it when i see it i have to i have to i have i didn't pay attention to that scene though because again yeah. i think the dream sequence because he dreams again i think yes, the dream does. sequences yeah. are just they're so hard to to make in order for them to look interesting Hmm. because we know Kurosawa did in the 90s towards uh, uh, the end of his uh, filmmaking career he did Dreams, a movie called Dreams and it's only a movie composed of dreams and I think dreams they need the aspect of color Hmm. and if not a very interesting composition interesting which in this film I didn't feel any any um yeah, I, it was it was very um, very like same color, especially in that in that dream sequence with the money exactly. and everything. I loved the the hills made of 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 money, but the the color grading was a little something. Well, there's not it's black and white, so there is no color grading. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. the whites were too too similar. Yeah, they're too just flat. Everything was very flat, almost the same color. Yeah, like the skeleton hands versus the money. They the contrast wasn't really yeah you know there in 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 full um Um, the the thing that that i want to ask you and the thing that struck me the most strike me not struck me strike me the most about this film is the use of language yeah as as we said throughout the film we have references to how america and the west have shaped indian cinema and uh there it's have it's heavily influenced by the west and they're actually emulating the west and they are also doing so by the way they speak mm-hmm. yeah now, yes. now as we know india was part of the british empire just until i think 1949 i might be mistaken um and then it became an independent state mm-hmm. 1950s i don't remember when but all of these people, yes, they went to English schools because that was the main language in, in India back, back in the day. But this is an Indian film. Mm-hmm. And 
they speak in, I mean, I don't know in what they speak. They speak either in Bengali, they speak in Hindu, because there was at one point they were talking about Bengali films. Yeah. And then at one point they were talking about Hindu films. And then right. I realized, wait, there are two, two, types of, uh, two types of films in India because of the uh, uh, language difference. Mm-hmm. And I said, this is very interesting because this reminded me a lot, a lot of Parasite. Yeah, which I was, I, I understood where you were coming from with that, but it kind of shocked me because this film uses way more English than Parasite does. Yes, but I'm, I'm talking about the use of a foreign language within one's own language. Right. Right. Um, in this film, every other syllable uttered is an English word, mm-hmm. if not an English phrase. Right. And you know, you know the, uh, the old man, Mm-hmm. Uh, he he spoke at certain points whole phrases in english yes right? yeah and it's so just, funny because it's so funny because as you're watching it you just hear an english word and you understand and then they speak fully hindi and then an english phrase and so on and so forth yeah so i mean I, it's, it's sort of a I, the way i look at it is that it's a commentary within a commentary right so you know, when they're talking about the Western's influence on movies, it's sort of meta because we're watching a movie where they're also using English as a language. But could we could we hypothesize that they take pride in this? That they they, they take pride in knowing English, that the Absolutely. fact that knowing this, they can embrace the their idols, you know, one hundred percent. I think that they there's a sense of pride in them knowing English because it sort of feels like they're more accustomed to the Western world and they how great, if you want to put it in quotations, the Western world's films are. And so within this film and in what they're talking about, there's a level of um looking up to that that thing. I was honestly shocked with how much English was in this film um but I was shocked but I understood it like it made sense that they were speaking English and I, I couldn't tell you why but it, it it just worked like it made sense for the film it made sense for where the film is being made at that time you know it I mean I, I, mean, I understand it's very interesting because we don't see this in for example Hong Kong films Mm-mm. of especially Wong Kar Wai where yeah. Hong Kong used to be also under British rule. That's and true. yet, but I'm talking about, um, right now I'm thinking about In the Mood for Love, which takes place in the 60s. Mm-hmm. And by that time, I don't, I, I think Hong Kong was free of British rule, but still the British influence was still there. So those those characters that we see on screen, maybe they know English, but they don't use the use of the languages. It's not even there. You can look, you can look at Japanese films, yeah, where Japan in, in Japan after World War II, you had um, American troops there stationed for a long period of time, and none of them sort of started using loan words, right? But in this film, in the hero, we see a lot of a lot of that. A lot of the English as well, like you said, is not even just to say the words in English. It usually was phrases like American coined phrases that they would use. Uh, I can't think of an example right now, but it was like, um, hmm. it was just something that an American oh, person they, would they, say. They used they used the word Coke at one point. I was like, would you like a Coke? And yes. the guy was looking at him strange. And uh, the person talking rephrased the question and said, would you like a Coca-Cola? Mm. And then the person instantaneously said yes, because everybody knows it was a Coca-Cola yeah. and only an American would say Coke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe that, that's the only example. Yeah, but it was, it was more so, cause that's, that could also be looked at as just a, you know, the language barrier between some people mm-hmm. at the time. Maybe some people don't know those American phrases, like, you know, exactly what you're saying. Um, but there were other almost idioms, like almost like American, um, catchphrases mm. that they would use to stress their point mm-hmm. and that's how they would use the american language so maybe you know maybe they have seen films and they're inspired and they they sort of take it upon themselves to learn those phrases to make themselves feel more western maybe that was a thing 
Um, but yeah, uh, that I mean, I have just the last thing I had was the tension between the protagonist and the uh, reporter. Mm. There's a lot of, um, you know, when they leave, when they part from each other, yeah. it was almost, I, I almost felt so um, just hopeless in the sense that like before sunrise gave me, where at uh. the end, you just know that they're not going to see each other again. Right. And it's this sense of like, that woman might have worked perfectly for him because she doesn't care about his craft. And you can also argue that it wouldn't have worked perfectly. But it's it's one of those moment, the right moment at the right time with the right person. Yeah. To have that exchange and then go on with your separate lives, which is how the film ends, basically. She walks off the station and he's being surrounded by uh fans and it's this bittersweet exchange that they have at the end that i really loved yeah i like in the exchange of looks when they're in the station you know everybody mm-hmm. goes to their own uh, parties and they look at each other and such yeah um my final thoughts on the film is that um i'm interested this movie has made me interested in checking more of uh, sagittarius ray's uh, filmography agreed agreed and i'm very interested now to see if he's using the same amount of english in his other films and if he's not if this is the only film where he uses english then this is a direct uh, commentary on how the west has shaped indian film and indian culture 100 so i'm really curious to see other films by him which is the music room devi um the big city Apple- the big city the apple trilogy yeah there's um, a lot there's a lot a lot a lot and i'm very excited to, to check more more out of, 100%. Uh, race um one second let me just clear this um what is your final rating out of five well for me at the moment is a four mm-hmm. but i'm assuming that here's the thing that i do with directors i so let's say i watch this is my first ray film Right. I watched The Music Room, Big City, Devi, The Apple Trilogy. So I watch uh, six more films. At the end of those six films, I should know if I like the director and if I don't. If I like the director and I reflect on the hero, I might actually change my rating from a four to a four and a half. Mm-hmm. Because now I understand I'm very comfortable with the... Uh, material with, uh, yeah with the uh director but let's say after those six films i don't change my mind about the hero then i have to rewatch it again yeah and see what bothers me yeah i i see where you're coming from i, I you know because yeah, i don't like to watch a film and say and feel that i don't really like it and pinpoint something and then i explore a person's filmography and that film sticks out uh a certain this specific film in this instance sticks out as being the one that I don't like. And mm. I want to go and revisit it and say why I don't like it. I completely understand. Um, same thing for me. Uh, not the rating, but in terms of uh, what you just said, the rating for me is a four and a half as of right now. Um, I loved it, but again, I didn't give it a five because there is a lot of stuff that I need to educate myself on in terms of his other work like you said where i need to see at what level he is in his career for this film exactly and based on his other work i hate to say that but it's true like you sort of base your ratings not only with any other film you've ever seen but if it's a specific filmography you need to know what the other films are in order to solidify how you feel about this one piece of work so for right now it's a four and a half i really liked it i think people should go check it out and i'm very excited for the rest of ray's filmography yeah i'm super excited absolutely um we we don't have a film set for our next video but we uh, don't yet we don't but we will in the meantime, well, in the meantime, everybody, uh, we would like to wish you happy and many more viewings of film. Um, Peter, would you like to um, to close with some uh, very philosophical words? Thanks for watching. <laughs>
you know, that's very philosophical, Peter. It's very philosophical. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I try my best. Um, go check out, I should have said this at the beginning, God damn it. Um, go check out the other video that's up, which is our haul from November of 2022. And by this time, the video that this is up, we also might have the actual haul where we sit down and talk right. up on the channel. Yeah. So there's yeah. there's a couple videos out at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, there will be more. We're hoping to be more steady with the yes that's that's one of our resolutions and uh one of my personal resolutions for this year is to watch more uh, asian cinemas and specifically mm -hmm. japanese cinema so in the previous video i i picked up on the last sale uh two japanese uh, films that i'm really really excited to check out and peter what's your resolution what's your personal resolution really? um my resolution is I haven't thought about it, but I know that I definitely, there's a couple uh, directors and actors whose filmographies I want to either begin, like this one, or um, just learn more about. So one off the top of my head is Sidney Poitier, for example. I want nice. to see, I have never seen a Sidney Poitier film and I want to. Mm -hmm. And um, besides that is to go to the film, New York Film Festival again. That was a lot of fun. So I definitely want to be there. And the film forum. And the film for you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's that's my resolution. Go to the New York Film Forum for the first time. That's right. Anyway, guys, take care and um, go watch films. Yeah. N ne never stop watching films. There never right. stop watching films. That's, that's a good. One. That's our All catch. Right, take care. See ya.